So um, this is inside of my uh, Surface Pro 3. I did break the screen uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, decided I was going to buy a new screen uh, off eBay for $250 uh, from China. And uh, this is the screen here. And as you can see, uh, I did take off this sticker plate, this thing here, to um, off the old screen to uh, repair it. And uh, as I say, it was uh, $250. Um, gave it a go already, as per fingerprints, <laughs> just to make sure it would work. And it does. Um, all the markings and stampings are the same as the old screen. So what I'm doing now is uh, in the process of replacing the glue around the edge here. And I bought this kit uh, with these tweezers and uh, I'm just slowly picking my way along making sure I get the little pieces of glass out um, off the glue uh, mat here so that when I put the new when I put the new glue down I should say the new strip um, it doesn't um, bubble up and it, it doesn't you know fit there that's not quite snug this is the new tape I bought uh, it was like seven bucks from uh, uh, Amazon came with these tweezers and it came with a cloth too so uh, the trick here is uh, these are non-magnetic and up in the corner these are very powerful rare earth magnets there's one here uh, one here and then over on this side there is one here and one here and forgive me I'm actually filming this on a an old Sony Z3 phone so um, it's a little bit little strange uh, so that's what you've got to watch out for make sure you get all the glue off and um, inevitably, you will break the old screen, completely getting it out. Um, it took me a few hours with a hot gun, a heat gun, at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Although I, I warmed the glass up to a point where I was barely able to touch it. And then I got prizing. Now, the problem with this screen is the glass is so sharp. Uh, if you're using one of these plastic levers, the old plastic levers that you can buy off the internet. I don't know whether you can see that on here, probably can't see it on there. Um, the glass is so sharp and fine that when you're running it around the edge of your uh, beading here, it will actually wear the plastic out to a point where it cuts through the plastic and snaps it. Um, so you're left with these little shards of glass. So the key is to be really thorough and go around this whole thing, um, picking off all of the glue which is uh, which is this stuff. Um, it's now warmed up to a point where I use the hot gun on it and it no longer sticks. So uh, I thought I'd change the, uh, as I say, the glue out. Um, so now it's just a case of going around, picking all of this old tacky stuff off, just being really careful here, because right here, and whether you can see that, is the camera and the microphone. And then over on this side, where the speakers are, you've got a watch right about here. There's a little screen that comes out, and if I can just pop it, pop a corner, I'll show you. It's just a little cover for the speaker. Oh, forgive me here, I am holding this, trying to focus and um, trying to prise this up all at the same time. So that's the little screen. And as you can see, it um, fills in the little speaker slot there. So make sure when you put that back in place, it's fitted the right way around. And also it's flush. And then on the other side, this side never came out. For some reason, it's a little little tighter in there. Um, so I'm going to give this a good clean out before uh, you know uh, I do any uh, I do anything else to this. And and I'm going to make sure I work my way along this bezel here, get all this crud out from it all I guess all bits of fluff you know there was a small gap on this thing and a lot of junk did get down inside it here are the uh, the connector cables here um, this was a plate that came off the bottom um, I'll just show you that real quick this was a plate here that came off this bottom connector uh, the larger connector here for the screen and the uh, and the um, uh, the keypad um, and then there's another smaller connector over on this 
uh, which just kind of slots into place. That slots in to right there. So you've got the one connector and then the back of this goes obviously um, on the bottom of the screen right here. So uh, I'll try and uh, shoot a little bit more of this. Um, sorry, my light is terrible and it's really difficult holding this phone, but that is a Surface Pro 3. It's an i5. It is a 256 uh, gig memory, um, 8 gigs of RAM. Let me just turn this around. This is the back of it, as you can see there. Um, so just be real careful when you're doing this. Um, I know I fixed it, ranked it 1 out of 10, 1 being the most difficult to fix. I don't think it's that difficult to fix personally. It's just very, very time intensive. And uh, you've got to be very, very careful with it. The downside to me dropping this is the screen cracked from corner to corner. Um, and what technically happened is uh, one half of the screen, the, the touch worked, and then the other half with the digitizer not attached didn't. So uh, I decided, you know what, I can't, can't live with this. I'm going to get the, uh, the screen replaced. So as I say, I bought the screen from Amazon, uh, sorry, from eBay. It was about 250 bucks. It shipped from China. It's exactly the same kind of screen that I took off. Uh, the only thing I did have to do, like I say, is take this pad off, put that pad back on there. As you can see, it's got the patterning from the... Uh, where I heated it up, and from where it was sat on the uh, the back of the old um, the back of the old uh, uh, circuit board here. Uh, this whole thing here is the battery pack. Um, it's uh, an interesting uh, battery here. You can see it's like four actual squares of battery power here. Um, so uh, it's an interesting device. Uh, it's remarkable uh, the cost of these things, and when you look at how much money it cost versus what actually went into it. <laughs> I can't say there's a great deal of, uh, of, of, of money tied up in here, but you pay a fortune. Unfortunately, you pay it or you don't. Um, so as the in terms of the repair, it's fairly easy. You just have to be patient with it uh, and take your time. Um, you know, when you're taking the screen off and you're prizing away and you're using, if you're using these plastic levers, just be prepared that you know you might have to heat that screen up every like a minute even less than that and just work your way along millimeter by millimeter prizing and prizing and prizing because you just don't want to shatter the screen into lots of little bits now i didn't end up breaking my screen in certain in, in certain areas especially along the top and i was really concerned about the microphone and camera up here so uh, one of the reasons i actually connected this new screen up without really fully attaching it was just to make sure that everything functioned Otherwise, I was going to send that screen back and, and get another replacement, but it looks looks fine. Uh, the only thing you've got to watch for is, I'm not sure if you can see it on this. Um, I've got a slight bend. As you can tell there, there is a slight bend in my casing. Now, the bottom of the casing where the uh, keyboard attaches is actually straight. This is this piece down here. As you can see, that's kind of straight. Um, the top is uh, bent and I think it was from where I dropped it but the one thing will happen is this screen is so rigid the new screen is so rigid uh, that when it goes into place it's actually gonna it's actually gonna straighten the back of this out so I wouldn't worry too much about it um, uh, it's gonna work out itself out fine because I actually had it in place at one point it did straighten the whole thing out it is fairly fairly tough stuff this uh, but before I do put it in, I'll probably make another quick video just to go around, show you me cleaning it up, uh, and then putting it all back together for you. Um, but don't be uh, shy. Be very careful if you're going to do this. Um, as I say, I fix it, ranked it 1 out of 10, 1 being the most difficult. I don't, honestly don't think it is. It's just you have to be patient uh, and make sure you get all the little chips of glass out uh, and make sure you don't damage any of the circuitry underneath. But as I say, Microsoft did a pretty good job. It's fairly well protected in here. It sits well behind this bezel, um, so it's quite deep in there. Um, but just be careful and you should be fine. Um, so that's it. I'll uh, see what I can post in a little while. I'll do a bit more cleaning and a bit more picking. It's probably going to take me at least another hour to get the remnants of this glue off. The glue at the top by the camera and the microphone is incredibly strong. Um, it seems to be of a different type of glue than they used on the sides of the bezel. 
Uh, don't know, don't know why. It's certainly thicker, but it seems more glueier. So uh, it seems a lot stickier. So uh, I would uh, just be extra careful on the top piece here. And there are some contacts that are getting exposed underneath this glue. Um, and I'm not quite sure what they are. There's actually some writing on some of those. But once I've got this cleaned up, I'm actually going to use a mild cleaner um, just to get the residue off this edge. Clean off the back of this. Uh, then I'll actually reassemble it with this tape. And then uh, cut certain strips off it like at the top here. This is a 5mm tape I bought. So I'll actually double it up on the top piece here and, and fit it together that way. So uh, hopefully I should get it to fit and, uh, and get it back um, back to order and then what I'm going to do is buy a, a bloody plastic case uh, something like a I don't know a gumdrop or something you know something for 50 or 60 bucks and then uh, hopefully I won't drop it again over and out